All right, here we go. We have Young Baby uh, from Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, a very talented rapper with a very, very interesting story. Uh, number one, man, welcome to Vlad TV. Thank you. Well, let's go ahead and get into your whole story. So, did you, were you born and grew up in Trenton? Yeah, I was raised in Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah. Okay, and Trenton's kind of a rough city. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Okay, what was it like growing up uh, in Trenton? You know, through, you know, middle school, uh, junior high, high school, and so forth. As I grew up, I grew up with six sisters. All on my mom's side. We grew up in the uh, east side of Trenton, New Jersey. It's more, <clears throat> it's more so called Weber section. Yeah, I was born out there. Through middle school, it was like, it was, it was good. But like, I just got caught up in a lot of stuff. I was playing basketball. I was sw on a swim team for middle school. Uh, that's about it. Like, then like, I just started getting incarcerated. Like, back and forth, back and forth. Like. Uh, how old were you when you first got locked up? Twelve. Okay. Can you say what that was for? Uh, it was for a robbery. Okay. And after that, were you getting arrested and going back into juvie again? Yeah, for like gun charges. Most of my charges are gun charges, though. Okay. And, you know, for example, I'm listening to uh, one of your songs, uh, Memories in the Trenches. And at the end, there's like four people with RIPs next to them. Uh, Reiko, Big T Black, Cap, and J Pistols. Uh, these were all your friends? Yeah, it was all my friends. Okay. Three of them was actually my best friends. Okay, and did all of them die uh, through violence? Yeah, all violence. Okay. So, by by seventeen, eighteen years old, you've already lost at least four of your friends. Nah, uh, more, more. How many friends did you lose? I lost about eight. Okay, so so this is happening, and you're losing your friends. You're catching gun charges. You're going in and out of juvie, uh, and then the actual situation happened, uh, October twenty fourth. 2019 at a, a gas station in Trenton. So uh, leading up to the situation, walk me through it and what happened. Like that night when I was there? Yeah. And the stuff happened to me? All right. I was, I was in my neighborhood and like before, before I made back then, I wasn't really rapping. My friend Big T Block that passed away, he like really inspired me, inspired me to rap. So that same night, my father had took me to the studio. He had took me to the studio. And then when we left the studio, when we left the studio, he dropped me off at my friend house, like probably like two blocks away from the gas station. Two blocks away from the gas station. I was chilling with my friend. We walked to the gas station. Like that's just like a normal spot in my uh like area everybody like get stuff from whatever you need. Like so I went up there and I'm cool with the gas station man. So I was talking to him. I was talking to him and it's like I probably was only up there for about like 30 minutes. Yeah, about like 30 minutes. And as from my perspective, it was ambulance and stuff around past, like going like south, going south in Trent, New Jersey. And I guess it was a shooting. So it was cops and stuff. So I'm like, all right, I'm about to, like, I'm about to get my stuff and leave, but I got sidetracked it. Cause I was talking to the gas station, man. And all I know is, Son just told me to look like it just felt funny that whole night. Like I just looked 
man, as soon as I look, like, the dude just like this, he just lift up on me. And the other two dudes was running behind him. So, like, I got a shell shot, like, oh, the gas station man look, and the man start firing. He shot the gas station man first, he fell. As I was running, I just feel pressure hitting my back, my buttocks, my legs, as I'm running. But I ain't like I can't give up. I didn't like I didn't know what was what was happening. All I know is they shooting. I didn't know like I was getting hit actually like. So as I'm running, I probably only ran about like 15 feet. It hit my foot. Bullet hit my foot. I jumped in the air. Like oh, I tried to catch my balance. I fell. As I fell, my ears was like like ringing. I still heard the gunshots going off. Boom, 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 boom. So as I'm laying there, I'm trying to like move, like get away, like get away from the uh, scene. Like as I look up, dude's right there standing over me. One was still shooting at my friends and two stood over me. Family stood over me and I'm just covering up, covering up. And then as I'm covering up, this arm, as you can see, it had I had uh, a skin grab because the hospital thought it had a main artery. I took about five, six shots to this to my left arm, and as they shot this arm, I moved my arm. They shot me in my face twice, boom, boom, and I turned around for them. But as they were shooting me, they was like, "Pussy, I told you, I told you, I told you." So I'm just. Like I'm closing my eyes. They shot me the rest of my times in my chest. They ran off. I just hear them laughing. Like they ran off. They laughing. I'm trying to get away. I couldn't move my legs at all. I got shot in my legs about 16 times. I'm trying to get away. The gas station lady, uh, at at the uh, Shell gas station, she know me. Like she 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 raised me. So she came out. She came out and she was like, just, she kept screaming my name, like my real name. Desire, Desire, get up, get up. I'm thinking like, damn, it's over for me. Like, I'm losing my blood, feel me? I'm losing my blood. They thinking I got shot in my head because it was leaking from my face down to my head because the way I was laying. So, as I'm just laying there, like, it's just like, damn, it's all over. Like, it's all over with. So I'm telling her, like, call my mom. But I couldn't really talk because they shot three of my teeth out when I got shot in the face. Telling her, like, like that's it. Like, just call my mom. That's it. The cops then pull up to about, like, not even the cops. The ambulance didn't even pull up to at least 10, 15 minutes. I'm just laying there. Something like that happened. A lot of shots go up. They supposed to be right there. So I'm like, damn, I'm losing a lot of blood. It's over for me. Like, so as I'm laying there, I'm just feeling drowsy. I'm just feeling super drowsy. Like, damn. So I passed out for about like a minute. I saw my friend, as you can see in the uh in my song, I put RIP Blicky Bug. That's my right hand man. It's like, that's my best friend. Like, that's where it all started when I moved to Warwick Section. Like, that was my best friend. Like, my first day ever going outside, it was snowing. We had a snowball fight. We started fighting. Like, and that became my best friend. I just saw, I just picture his face. I don't know if it really was him, but I just imagine his face. And he just was like, not right now. Like, not right now. That's all I remember. He said, not right now. Not right now. Looking at me. And boom. Like, it went away. Went away as I'm laying there. I'm gasping more and more now. I'm breathing more now. This is this the funny thing about it. I'm I'm trying to catch my breath now. The ambulance finally there. They picked me up. They put me on the uh on the stretcher. They put me in the back of the uh, ambulance van. And I'm laying there. As I'm laying there, I asked the lady like, "Am I gonna make it?" She said, "You doing?" She said, "You doing good so far." Boom, I just passed out. Then that's why I don't know if they put me under anesthesia. 
the anesthesia, they they said I was in so much pain, they put me in anesthesia that I went into a coma. I was in a coma for two weeks, almost two weeks, like 12, 13 days, I was in a coma. As I'm in a coma, I had like a lot of dreams, like bad dreams, good dreams, but it was like, it was like I had good dreams, then bad dreams, then it became good again when I woke up. Like as them last couple of days, my dreams as I was sleeping, uh, like I woke up as the dreams got good again. And I woke up, I saw my mother there, my father, feel me? I'm just like, damn, like, is this still a dream? Like, so as I, when I woke up, I didn't, I forgot everything that even happened. So I couldn't talk because my mouth was wired because I got shot in the face. So I'm asking my mother, like, like, let me get a pen so I can write. She like, she understanding me. She like, you need a pen, you need to write. I'm like this. So I wrote on a piece of paper, like, what happened to me? She said, you got shot. I said, I got shot. No, I didn't. So I just started getting like mad. She like, yes, you did. So I'm just angry at first. Then I asked for the paper back. I wrote again. I said, how many times did I get shot? She said, they said in between, they said, you have about 45 holes in you. I said, 45 holes? She said, they don't really know how much times you got shot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see you get your papers. Like yeah, like your yeah, uh my uh history, my uh my medical results, like and it said 35 times. So I'm like, damn. I just sat there for days, like like they came in there probably like a week after I was up from my coma and they tried to get me up for therapy and stuff. I didn't wanna do it, like I was just angry, like I'm like, nah, like I ain't get shot that many times. Like, I'm just thinking to myself, like, how am I still alive? Like, my mom just, I mean, she just burst out crying. I just like, it's okay. Like, I'm here. Like, but it's this what gets me. I got shot in my legs about 16 times, like in total, both legs. I broke my left leg. I was only in the hospital for 22 days. And I went to the rehab for about two, three weeks. And that's it, I was home. But I was still like in pain. Like I was still like limping. Like I couldn't really lift all the way up. Like I was still grouched over, like slouched over walking. But like, I didn't think I was gonna walk again cause I also got a spot. I got a bullet that's in the middle of my spine that's lodged. And I got one that's on the side of my spine touching. So the hospital was basically saying like, damn, like, I don't know how you're not paralyzed. Me either. Right? The minute you break your spine or something, hit it, you're supposed to be paralyzed. Like, I didn't, I wasn't paralyzed. I didn't go through paralysis, none of that. So I'm just thinking like, damn, like, I got a bullet in my spine. I'm really walking again. Like, but that whole situation just like, even sometimes, I never had no dream about it ever since, ever since like it happened to me, like ever since I've been back, good. But like at nighttime when I'm in my room, I just get like flashbacks and I start looking, I start getting up, I start going to my windows, like I start getting frightened because I start thinking about my situation. Because as I was saying, I was talking to the gas station, man, something tell me to look and then that shit happened to me, like. So every time I get a flashback like that, I just get frightened. Like, I start looking out my windows. I start making sure my door locked. I start going out my room, going downstairs, making sure I'm everything locked, windows locked, everything. So I mean, it just took a lot. But then on top of me losing friends, it just took a lot, like. I go through a lot of emotions, but I try to be strong. Like, they say God give his strongest, his strongest challenges to the strongest people. Well, the situation itself, because when you first, you know, when I first heard about it, 
I thought it was some sort of beef situation or, or something, but you're making it sound like you're just hanging out at this gas station and there's some other situation down the street and you just randomly ended up being in the wrong place in the wrong time? Yeah, basically. Okay, so you didn't know these guys at all? Nah. Okay. Do you know what kind of gun you got shot with? I got shot with a forty caliber and two two nine millimeter calibers, two different guns of a nine millimeter. So they just opened fire on you. Were they trying to rob the gas station, or were they just just I don't know, just on some sort of killing spree? I don't know. I don't know what they was up to, but I just as I look, I just ran. So like it was just like damn. I don't know if they was just like, oh, he right there, get him. But I don't know, like, if it was that type okay. of situation or whatever. Like, All right, so the, the gas station attendant, he got shot? Yeah, he got shot. Okay, and then you had a friend with you that got shot as well? Oh, no, no, no. They were shooting okay. at my friends that was running. Okay, that was just, you were, I guess, hallucinating at one point? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so they take you to the hospital. They, you know, and there was a picture. Uh, I think when I looked at your your page on Genius, there's a picture of you with all these tubes in you and everything else like that. That was you in the hospital, I assume. Yes. Okay. When you came to, uh, was the police there to question you? Were they charging you with anything or, or anything else like that? Nah, they they couldn't really question me because I was already out by the time they got there. Like, I was out already. Like, I passed out, and when I woke back up, I was already on the ambulance van. So, like, at that point, they stayed at the crime, I guess, and I was on the ambulance. Okay. The The guys that shot you, were they caught? As I'm assuming, yeah, they said they did catch them, but I, I don't know. I, okay, so they didn't ask you to be a witness or, or point nah, them out or they, anything else like that? Nah, they came to the hospital, my mom said, but I was in a coma. Like, they tried to come there and try to question me, but I was in a coma. Like, they never got, got to talk to me, never got a statement from me, none of that. Like... Well, right, because if you're in a if you're in a you know a gas station, there's cameras, there's other witnesses, there's everything. They they probably don't even really need to talk to you. They could probably just check the tapes. So, but you're not complete. You think that the guys got caught? You never looked into it or, or anything else like that. You would think if something this this crazy happened, you'd want to know who's behind it. No, nah, yeah, like yeah, they said he did catch the guys, but like I don't really be. I ain't trying to like. Like getting all that, like I don't feel me. I mean, there must be a level of anger and rage. Yeah, and that's why. You... That's why I don't even want to know about them. Like that's mm. feel me. What they got going on? Like, okay. If you found out that they got the death penalty, would that make you feel better or not really? Nah. Nah. Okay. And you were only 17 years old at the time. Yes. You got shot 35 times. Yes. Can you break down the, the parts of the body that got hit? I got shot twice in my face. I got shot twice in my face, five in my chest, uh, about four or five in my arm. and uh, my back, I got shot about like seven times. My butt talks about like five, six, and then legs about 16. About that. I mean, I know of people that have gotten shot one time and they didn't make it. Sometimes not even in a in a vital organ, sometimes in like a leg where you hit a, an artery and then they just bleed out. You got shot 35 times and survived, I, I've never even heard of this. You know, 50 got famous for getting shot nine times. You're like four times that. Uh, I mean, do you ever just sit back and think like 35 times and I'm and I'm walking around talking? 
Hell yeah. You know I, my life. <laughs> I think all the time, like, so I'm a testimony. Like, I just be thinking, like, <laughs> I can't be, like, can't be touched. Like, how to survive all that. So, like, it's like, yeah. Okay. So, a couple of weeks later, you're back home. And then you drop the song back then, which you dropped in, in April, which was what, maybe about four or five months later? Yeah, about yeah, four months later. Okay, and, and that song pretty much talks about the situation. Yeah. Uh, great song, by the way. Let, let me just put it like this. Um, you know, when, when, I, when I heard about you, when I started going through the catalog and I started going through the music, and when I heard this song, I'm like, yo, this is, this is a really dope song, period. But the fact that it ties into your story makes it even more amazing. Uh, you know, anyone who's watching this, just look up back then by Young Baby. A great, great song, great beat, great chorus, great lyrics. Uh, and you really put your heart into that song. Um, you know, you said, I'm in the streets and I lost my homies. They caught me, had to creep up on me. Um, you know, you pretty much start out the song with what happened. Um, you know, you said, but I'm gonna give you props, 50 shots. That's a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cause, cause it was like 50 shots went off that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely, yeah. When you put that song out, what was the reaction? Like reaction for me or like people around me? People around you. Like everybody's like, damn, like that's fire, like drop it. Like I'm just like, you think so? You think so? Like, so I'm like, I gotta get a video to it. Matter of fact, look, I got my wires out January. I made that song. I made that song probably like March. No, 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 February. Well, it took me like a month to drop it because I'm like, damn, I need a cameraman. I need a place to shoot it at. I need scenes I need to think about. So I hit up I hit up my peoples, Jay Stacks. He became my manager. I hit up my father. Feel me? And we just got it together. Like, we just shot the video. Do you still live in the same city? Uh, nah. I live like 10, like, it's like, it's not in Trenton, it's not. But close. Yeah. Having gone through that, have you ever thought of just moving away, just a completely different place, LA, Florida, Atlanta, just, you know, because along with this, with this shooting, which you're unbelievably lucky to be alive. You're talking about all the gun cases. You're talking about all your friends who are getting killed. Clearly, this is an area that's very much a danger to your life. Yeah. Now, how, how, are you, what, 18 now? Yeah, I'm 18 now. Right. Now, I understand as an 18-year-old, you don't have a ton of money saved up and everything else like that, like a, like a 40 or 50-year-old, but still, you only have one life. You know, all the money in the world, you can't take it with you. And sometimes it is worth it to just start over and, and go without just for your own safety. Uh, I've interviewed a lot of people recently, like FBG Duck didn't want to move out of his own city. We talked about it in our interview. He got killed in Chicago. Um, Mo3 talked about how there was, you know, money on his head in Dallas, but he wasn't going to move out anyways. He doesn't feel like anyone's going to chase him down. And that's exactly what happened. Someone chased him down and killed him in broad daylight. Uh, you know, we've lost a lot of people this way. Uh, you know, Boosie said it, hypnotized with hatred in your own city. And you're unbelievably lucky to be alive right now. So are you considering just going somewhere else completely? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Once I get settled, like music start really, really rolling for me. Either if I stay unsigned or get a deal, 
feel me? As long as I start making like money off my music, then yeah, I'm out of here. Like it's not left here for me. And Trent is not left for me. Like Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean the song back then is over a million views. It's at like almost one point five million right now. So I'm sure there's been some label interest. Uh oh, yeah. you know, hopefully with you know, with a Vlad T V interview, you know, a lot of a lot of people are gonna perk their ears up. Uh and hopefully you'll get a, a big you know, a bigger offer if you've already been getting offers. Uh, but my suggestion is, when when that happens, just get the fuck up out of there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, and like I said, it's not it's not just the story that really had you, you know, had us reach out to you and had you come in because because the music is dope, man. I think you're you're one of these artists that I think that a lot of people just haven't caught up to yet, because I feel like you're better than a lot of dudes who are popping right now. Um, you know, and I'm just being honest. You know, we don't we don't charge for interviews. You know, we, we pick people. Uh, people earn their spot in that chair that you're sitting in right now, and you're one of those people because, like I said, the, the music is dope. The way you harmonize is dope. The way you put your your words together and the way you pick your beats, uh, I think you know artistically, is, is very 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 good. So, man, I'm just hoping all the best for you, and you know, I just want you to be safe and, and get a chance to work on this music and have a chance to, you know really get your art out there and not get caught up because man, it's, I've never heard of this man 35 times. It's very, very sad. And even though you are walking around and you are living your life, you're still going through the pain, the physical and emotional pain of that situation. It sounds like, yeah. you know, are you worried every time you step out of the house? You know, is, is there a high level of paranoia all, all the time? Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I bet. That's probably something that's never going to go away. I mean, have you thought of getting therapy and, and really trying to work through these issues? Yeah. Yeah, I talked to my mom, my ex-girlfriend about it, but, like, they were saying it to me, but I'm like, nah, like, I was getting angry because I'm like, damn, I need to, like, I want y'all to talk to me. I want y'all to be my therapy, like. Like, and they was just trying to get a therapist. I'm like, they're not going to understand. But they just kept saying, they professional, they professional. I'm like, nah, just leave it. Like, like just leave it. Like, you know I mean? So I just deal with a lot of that on my own. But like, it ain't really working. Be honest, it ain't really working. All right, man. Well, listen, uh, young baby, man, I appreciate you coming in. Uh, you know, you got a dope catalog. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, after this, we're going to see a lot more of you, a lot, you know, bigger songs, bigger videos, you know, some features, maybe a deal, whatever else, man. Until Definitely. next time. <laughs> All right, man. Peace. <laughs>